Hey everyone and welcome back to another World of Warcraft Legion video. So, patch 7.3 has been on the PTR for a while now, and recently Blizzard said that it is pretty much content complete. Now that means that the actual stuff to do, the things that, you know, your character can, you know, places you can go to, they're there, but the systems and the rewards are not fully formed yet. Now, I think that looking at just the content itself is a very valuable thing to do. Often great content can be ruined by a bad system or the opposite can happen, so it's good to see what really lies at the core of a patch. And we're going to begin with the questing content. Unlike patch 7.2, we actually have a fair bit of quest content on Argus. Now this actually plays in a way that is quite similar to some of the Warlords of Draenor stuff where it's really heavily voiced, it's mostly linear, and then there's a few side chains of quests thrown in for good measure. Now this quest flow actually really suits the scale of Argus well, and it lets Blizzard tell a cohesive story that leads you through the different zones, which is very, very welcome after patch 7.2. Basically, it sort of plays like a small, you know, single player campaign. Now, mechanically, it is just a, you know, mixture of the standard kill collect stuff. There's a few gimmick quests thrown in there, of course, too, and, you know, stuff like using vehicles. Now, the good news is that all of the gimmicks are really fun and none of them are annoying, and they therefore do a really good job of breaking up the flow of gameplay. Now, the quest line uh, for Argus is also split between the three zones, and that kind of does help to keep things fresh. There's no word in the release pacing yet. We don't know if it will be gated, so we'll just have to see what happens closer to launch there. Now, this quest content is also used to introduce new characters um, into the game's lore. Well, not into the lore, but just into the live game. And I think that could be really good for a future expansion, a little bit like how Warlords of Draenor gave us um, everyone's favorite shit, Wizard Khadgar. Now, the lore also is just really strong here. I think players who enjoy the, the world and the questing will really get a lot out of that for what it is. There are some sort of Warlords-like quest sequences which are quite compelling. Now that said, I know that there are people who don't really like content like this, don't care about it. Wow, it's such a large game that really it's something different to just about everyone. Ultimately, the quest content is a one and done thing that you will have to repeat on alts, but I personally think that designing the game around alts too much kind of cheapens the role of a single character, which is against the core of an RPG. But I mean, hell, how much of an RPG is wow, you know, is it anymore? Hard to say, but overall, I think the quest stuff is good. I also think that there is something to be said for Apache uh, sort of pushing the envelope forward a little bit with the broader story and content of the game. It goes a long way to creating a perception of value, and I think that's something that players will see in this patch. Let's talk about the world. So this patch takes place on the broken world of Argus. We get to explore three different zones. We've got Korkun, Makari, and the wastelands surrounding Antorus. Now, they all look sort of different. Those zones 1 and 3 do use quite a lot. The green and black legion theme is a bit more brown in um, zone 3. Um, you know, there's certainly something to be said, though, with the, the space backdrop. It really does make it feel kind of different to explore for all of them. Now, Makari is essentially a slightly different version of the Warlords of Draenor Draenei stuff. And I think it's really, you know, sort of unique, a beautiful feeling. It's got a different color palette and enough stuff to throw it off that it does feel very fresh. It's also quite open, which is nice for navigation. But fi uh, sadly, the final zone is really annoying to run around. I, I don't like it that much. Um, I mean, yeah, I get that the Legion homeworld's supposed to be sort of annoying, but uh, still. Now, they're all connected via a fast travel system that is entirely new to World of Warcraft. Each zone has a number of beacons. These will transport you uh, to the Vindicar, which is your spaceship. And from the Vindicar, you have this, like, teleportation hub, which you can use to either move the Vindicar to other Argus zones or to instantly teleport to one of the beacons in the zone that the Vindicar is currently at. It's basically kind of like the Guild Wars 2 waypoint system, but the difference is you got to go back to the Vindicar first, so perhaps there's too many load screens there, but overall, I do think it's functional. Players who are worried about travel times without having flying, I think they can rest easy. Getting around on Argus is a breeze, unless you fall into a crevasse in the third zone and you can feel sad. Now, on the whole, we're getting a pretty large area that is far, far more compelling uh, than the Broken Shore, so overall, Blizzard do get a massive thumbs up for the actual world that this patch is in. Let's talk about invasion points, so they're actually hard to cover in a video like this. This video is about the core content, not necessarily the systems, um, as the systems are more subject to change, but like we can go into a zone and kill the enemies and see what it's, it's like. Now, I'm kind of lukewarm about the invasion point content, 
to be honest. I think they could be wrapped around a fantastically designed system that could create a lot of gameplay, though. Um, but basically, these are kind of like a take on Rift. So there's greater and lesser versions that vary slightly, but the core idea is that these are scenarios that take place in... I believe, nine different planets, aka tile sets, they generally do reuse old assets, which I actually completely support. I think it is a great thing to do. It lets the game designers explore cool new ideas in a way that is free from having a major art cost in terms of asset creation. Now, my experience with these is that they have been fun enough once or twice, but they've lacked that competitive element or, or variation of a Diablo 3 Rift, so you're kind of just doing them over and over again for resources. I'm not 100% sure on how that will all sort of feel at the end of the day. So for me, the core content isn't fantastic, though they could create a very effective system around this. And um, at the very least, I do see this as an interesting indication of them exploring um, sort of future territory with content. Let's talk about the seat of the Triumvirate. So, uh, we've got a new dungeon in this patch, of course. Um, overall, I think it is a good dungeon. The boss fights are pretty cool. The visuals are also quite strong. It's not overly long, and um, there's really no particularly annoying mechanics. Bar maybe the waves of ads at the middle, and they could be annoying with the right combo of Mythic Plus affixes, assuming they apply to those ads, but anyway, um, it's pretty good. Now, overall, its length is not too long or short. I think it's sort of just right. It fits in, essentially, just with the current Legion dungeon roster. It feels like a Legion dungeon. The one criticism I would have is it takes place in the Argus overworld. There really aren't sort of unique new assets here or anything like that, and it seems like it had a pretty low time allocation from the team in terms of the man hours to create the environment that the dungeon sort of takes place in. Now, it could be that the artists are working in the next expansion, and of course, they already did quite a lot with this patch anyway. Overall, though, um, you know, I'm happy with them sort of reusing overworld stuff in dungeons, but if they are going to do it, I'd rather they decided, okay, we'll spend less art time in each dungeon, but maybe make twice the dungeon so that you sort of have a winged dungeon situation like in TBC or Wrath where they sort of reuse tile sets. Um, but still, you know, it's a good bit of new content just for me, not as exciting as the Cathedral of Eternal Night, which in fairness, I think was fantastic. Okay, world quests. They're back. Uh, they continue to be a part of the core identity of Legion. Patch 7.3 continues much in the same manner with World Quest, though it does make some good alterations. There are two new factions that have been added to the Emissary Cache system, and the Armies of Legion Fall are also added to the Emissary Cache system. This effectively reduces your workload a bit, so previously you were doing your Broken Shore World Quests every day, and then you were doing the 7.0 uh, Emissary Cache thing, Unifying all this into the Emissary Cache system means that even though there are all these new factions, you're still, you know, sort of one Emissary Cache thing per day, um, on average. Now the quests themselves, like, they're what you would expect. There's a few gimmick ones which have sort of cool, fun little mechanics. There's a few elites to kill, there's a few fill the bar quests. And the final zone is full of elite quests, which do sort of contribute to it feeling more menacing. Overall, though, these are world quests, and you probably already know what you think about them personally. Um, for me, they don't feel super different to what I was doing last September, and as I've said many times, I think the future is in dynamic content that changes based on player behavior and trends, such that the world of Warcraft feels reactive and alive, rather than something that static content is spawned on top of. Let's talk about the Vindicar ability. So, the Vindicar is your big spaceship, and it's got Warlords of Draenor's uh, garrison ability sort of like things. Uh, so, as you quest, you get access to some cool new weapons that you can basically call down to help you. So, one of them is a beam that damages enemies. Reminds me of the Ion Cannon from um, Command & Conquer 3. Yes, Tiberium Wars. Um, you've got a mech that you can call in. It's especially fun, and these really help to break up the gameplay. So, while the Fill the Bar world quests aren't super exciting, Doing them in a big mech is certainly an improvement, so, you know, thumbs up for that system. I also want to quickly mention professions. So, they've added a whole new set of profession mats, so mining, herbalism, skinning, uh, new cloth as well, all the sort of base mats. Um, there's like a new sort of version of all of them for the patch 7.3 crafts. Now, I'm going to wait until more of the actual crafts themselves are implemented before I do this system in detail, but overall, I think it's a, you know, a pretty good move doing a revamp of that system. It seems like we essentially just get a new set of crafted gear, a new type of obliterum, all that stuff, and it really focuses the profession content on Argus, which I think could be a good thing or a bad thing. Um, that said, I do like them doing something ballsy rather than just sort of throwing on, you know, a few more obliterum levels and calling it a day. We'll have to see, but it's nice to see that at least effort's being put in there. Okay, Antorus. 
this isn't really too important for this video because on Taurus, the, the raid isn't going to come out until like two months after the patch. Now, Blizzard usually make brilliant raid content. I've got no reason to, spec uh, to suspect this would be any different. Hopefully, they'll at least, you know, test the Mythic stuff a bit better than they did with um, Tomb. Uh, I think a repeat of the problems that uh, Method and Exorcist ran into wouldn't be ideal, but at the end of the day, that's so few players, it doesn't matter that much. And the environments of the raid, I think, look really cool. They've uh, managed to sneak a nice amount of variation, too. As an example, a &R Zone is a bit more lush and verdant, so all that's pretty cool. And we also have a new set of world bosses, which, I guess, you know, they'll come out when the actual patch uh, comes out. They won't come out uh, aligned with the raid. So overall, where am I left with this patch? To me, it feels like more of the same, but executed really well with a great amount of polish. Is it breaking the mold? No, it's definitely slotting itself into the existing Legion setup, but it's just a lot bigger and more polished. So like, you know, it's, it's Legion. We've got world quests, emissary caches, the stuff you would expect. For me, it's a pity that there's not that much gameplay system innovation, it seems, with sort of dynamic systemic content that's being uh, applied over the world. You know, we're just sort of getting a new slate of static content that is incentivized by a reward system. Uh, currently, that's a currency, which is not too dissimilar to what we've seen before. So I'm a little bit disappointed at the lack of innovation, but I think that, you know, sure, they haven't decided to innovate a lot, but they have instead made a quite a lot of content that is of a good quality. So generally, I think the content of this patch will bring people back to actually check it out and see what's what's really going um, on there. And I think the content itself is worth playing through and it is good quality, good fun stuff. Um, so overall, you know, I think this is a really good major content patch for Legion. And it's one that I think will perform quite well initially. For the long tail performance, we just need to see what the systems are like. Personally, I want to see them break the mold with the next expansion or, you know, embrace the, uh, the idea of the world being less static, stuff like that. Uh, we'll have to see how the reward systems of this patch tie all of this content together, but that's still being iterated on and we'll check it out at a later date. But there you go, my thoughts on the content on patch 7.3. Let me know what you've thought from uh, looking at these videos. I'm very keen to see how this is going down with... Um, you know, everyone who's not in the weird YouTube bubble. But yeah, guys, thank you very much for watching this video, and I'll see you next time.